Connor, just can you give me your sense of kind of where, where the group is at? Once again, my teammates come up short. All right, welcome everybody to the Big Apple Hockey Honest Press Conferences, where we will talk for the athletes or executives. And we got to start with a guy that's the center of attention in the NHL right now. Yes, Barry Cock Cockney <laughs> did it again. And that is played by our Mr. John Fulkowski. Well, thanks, Mr. Reporter Guy, for screwing up my name once again. Not like I'm not used to that or anything. But, um, yeah, so I got tendered an offer sheet. So I'm a lightning rod right now, center of controversy. And I accepted a $6.1 million offer sheet from the Carolina Hurricanes because – they decided to play general manager for our Montreal. They rather decided to play general manager for my Carolina Hurricanes a couple of years back and signed Sebastian Ajo to an offer sheet. But what they did and failed, to, well, what they failed to do, I should say, is they failed to make it a big decision. And they basically signed Ajo for Carolina. So now what goes around comes around and here we are and I'm the lightning rod. I feel like I'm running out in a field with a kite during a thunderstorm. A lot of fun, right? So I have to sit here and take all these lovely questions and I have to look at fans saying, why would you take that offer sheet? Uh, hello. Hockey is a business. And in this world, you kind of have to make money. To, you know, to live, to support yourself and a family, which you eventually want to have. Yes, you can rain all that money down on me, 6.1 million of those and a nice little $20 signing bonus. Cute little kick there, Carolina social team and Carolina general manager, Don Waddell. That was, that was cute. That was really cute. Petty, but cute. Loved it. Thought it was a, uh, a plus level troll job. Chef's kiss. I'll take questions. Yes, Barry. Um, so is this a win-win? Are you gonna are are you looking forward to staying with the Canadians if they match, or looking forward to going to the Carolina Hurricanes with a lot more finished players on their team as well? Well, a lot more finished players wouldn't be bad considering people like you can't say my last name to save your life. So um that that's a that's a good way of looking at it. Um the other thing would be, I don't care where I play. I I, I just want to make money and, and play hockey. I, I mean, isn't that the dream? Isn't that everybody in this world? I mean, everybody that likes hockey, that is, I should say. If you don't like hockey, piss off. But, um, yeah, I, I just want to be where, one, I'm wanted. Two, I'm going to get paid. Three, I have a chance to win. Haven't we heard that line recently? Uh, I think some Swedish dude in Vancouver said that last one. But, uh, yeah, um, hopefully I'm in that kind of situation sooner than later. So if I go to Carolina, I know that I can put up some real good offensive numbers and make sure that, uh, that you know, that moolah starts raining down into my bank account and I could start taking more crazy vacations to different destinations, you know, my off seasons, um, you know, maybe enjoy a couple of hurricanes. Pun intended there. See what it did? <laughs> but uh, yeah, down south in the uh, Carolinas. And um, hopefully, Tom, if you're uh, if you're watching, won't be stingy with the money in the future because you got a hell of a player on your hands. Just saying. Mr. Loraco? Um Yes, Barry. Uh, there, were, there were reports that uh, your negotiations with Montreal that the dollar amount um, never really got higher than like 2.5 uh, million on a, on a bridge. Um, so when Carolina presented you with this offer, how surprised were you that they were paying you 6.1 million? Cause, um, I mean, even you had to probably say to yourself, like, you know, I'm not worth this amount of money right now. I must've been caught off guard, but, um, you know, how happy were you when you saw that amount of 6.1 compared to what Montreal was giving you? I, I really don't know if I should be taking this as a backhanded compliment or not, because I definitely feel like I could go out there and put up 
a, a boatload of points if in the right situation. I don't know what they had going on in Montreal there. They thought this uh, Daniel guy was a point producer when he was really a checker more than anything. So they didn't want to ever really give me the chance there, it seems. Um, but it looked like they might have had no choice this season. So um, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it's uh, it's nice. Yeah, sure. Might have been a little bit of a surprise. But uh, if, if anything, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to stick it to whatever general manager I'm playing with. I'm going to force them to pay me and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make a name for myself. So, you know what, if they don't want to give me a qualifier after this season, you know what, then I walk and I can negotiate with whatever, whoever the hell I want at that point. If they want to qualify me after, let's just say, I don't know. I put up 70 points Not out of the question, by the way, um, then I can go and use that as a bargaining chip going forward. And I become one of their core players and I become a guy that they don't want to live without. And that's ultimately the goal as a hockey player in the NHL. You want to be one of those guys where decisions have to be made and, you know, teams start making moves to fit you in. And the other guys are on the outskirts at that point. So, um, you know what? A little bit of a surprise, but I'm not really surprised in a way because I'm a pretty damn good player. You'll see. All right. Well, we hope we're going to see that soon. Uh, yes, Barry. And uh, you had a long week of being center of attention in the NHL. So take it easy. Learn how to say my name. Thanks. I won't need to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> All right. Well done. But <laughs> yes, Barry Kakaniemi or Katiem, whatever, uh, whatever. All right, Capo Kako. That's the only Finnish name I really uh, need to know. But we got to go deeper behind the scenes on this. Fortunately, we have our Mister Anthony Larocco as Mark Bergevin. So, as you all know, Carolina Hurricanes and their general manager Don Waddell. Um, I've all appreciated uh, my forward, just very uh, I'm a little surprised. Uh, we had some talks about a trade for Kakaniemi. They were interested in, they were interested in him. Um, I gave him my price, uh, which they bought that. Um, they didn't like. We couldn't come to agreement there. Um, so I thought maybe this could happen, but I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really sure. Lo and behold, they did. Um, now let me just say, Carolina Hurricanes, you guys are are. are or a joke of a franchise. I mean, your, your Twitter account, you guys think you're funny, like with all, your, with all your jabs, tweeting your tweet out in French and, you know, using the same quote I used when I talked about my off sheet, Sebastian Ajo. Um, you guys are like a second rate organization where you, you won what? Well, one cup. I mean, uh, we're, I'm the mo I'm part of the most illustrious franchise in NHL history. You should act like it. You guys are joking, really embarrassing yourselves personally. Um, but you want to give 6.1 to Jesperi Kakaniemi, which no shot at him, but he's not worth that right now. So you guys want to, you know, want to do that? Go ahead. You know, I haven't made my decision yet, but I could just easily just let them walk. And then you guys are on the hook for that. The Hurricanes, that is. Uh, and then you have to make a corresponding move to, you know, get under the cap, being that you only have about four and a half million change in cap space. Um, and then if he has like only like another 20 to 30 point season, you got to qualify him at 6.1 million. So um, kudos to you, Don Waddell. I thought you may have been, um, you know, being revengeful and, and thinking you were going to get revenge on me for my Ajo off sheet. But I think you kind of screwed your team. So, but that's that. Um, I know I really don't want to talk about that, you know, joke of a franchise. And, um, but, you know, I, I have a decision to make. I have until I think Saturday or Sunday to decide if we're going to match or not. Um, if I decide not to match, uh, I have to go out and replace Jesperi Kakadami, which the wheels are in motion that I'm already uh, targeting a particular player I have in mind. And, and if that's the route that I go um, or if I choose to match and keep Jesperi, I'm happy. I like him. He's a nice young man. And, um, you know, hopefully, though, at that mount, he'll, you know, he'll break out, at which point I won't have any problems with paying him that much. So we'll have to see me and my team what we decide. But, man, that Hurricanes organization, you guys are just – you guys are a joke, but <laughs> I'll take some questions. Mark, who would win in a battle 
uh, like a like a WWE war game style battle. You and the Montreal Canadiens social media team, or Rod Brindamore and the Carolina Hurricanes social media team, because I, I think everybody really wants to see this more than anything right now. I you know I'm, I'm not I'm not too familiar who we have on our social media team. Um, I'm sure they're well qualified. And if we the problem is we're not like that. We're not classless. We're not petty. We're the Montreal Canadiens. We hold ourselves to a high high threshold nothing but the best we're like the new york yankees so i'm not i don't even want to see us do something like that in turn to get back at them um but if we really had to it would be us we're we're we're, we're better we're, we're better than any franchise in any in every area of hockey operations so you know definitely us but again now that's not my style i'm not looking to get into a twitter war with that joke of a team and their owner tom dundon who's who is a idiot but you know i'll take more questions so are you going to actually uh how cl how close are you to matching this uh offer sheet right now you know we're on we're on the fence about it uh you know i i have i have a contingency plan i've already been talking to the arizona coyotes about taking the first and third round pick i've received from from hartford um and and uh using it to get christian dvorak out of arizona um, he's a guy that we identified. Um, we like him a lot as a player. So, um, I'm confident if we do, if we do let Jesperi go to Hartford, um, cause that's where they should have stayed. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be okay. Cause we'll bring in Christian Dvorak. But, um, like I said, Jesperi Kakanami, he's a, he's a nice young man. Uh, obviously we did highly of him. We drafted him where we did. Um, we want to keep him. We just valued the player at a different dollar amount when we were having our negotiations with them. Um, so kind of done thing through, uh, if we keep him, he's essentially throwing our salary structure out of whack here. But, um, you know, it's something we're still internally deciding and, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll make that decision for you guys to talk about in the next, uh, in the next day or two. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mark. You're a terrible person. So, yeah, you suck. <laughs> and now we got to go from one Mark to another Mark. And my guy is Doug, uh, Don Waddell. So first, let me just get that up there and let me say, boom, that's what I had to do to you. You thought I forgot all about Sebastian Ajo? Uh -uh. You guys think you could just come in and try to take my player? Well, I'm going to take your, um, did he play on the third line this year? I forgot. Maybe the second line. Who cares? You know what? I got him. Uh, that's what's done. 6.1 million. Either you're going to pay or we're going to make sure that it's it's very uncomfortable for you. This is why you don't offer sheet. This is why you don't do that, Mark. You you hack. You come on. You want to sit there? You want to try to poach Sebastian Ajo for me? All you did was negotiate for me. That's all I already did. I had to just wait six days and go, I thought I was going to do this the entire summer. Instead, six days. But you thought I forget? You know what they say. A cane or a thrasher, because I I was the GM for them too. Never forgets. That's right. We don't forget, and we're coming for you. Sure, you're in a different division, and um, you have your own issues right now. But we're coming for you. I mean, we got Freddie Anderson in net right now. You know, all these moves I'm making, they're they're all the right moves. So we'll just see about that. All right, I'm gonna take some questions because I'm feeling mighty frisky on this. Uh, Don, with everything that's going on between these two organizations, do you, do you really think this is a good idea to be throwing out a retaliatory uh, type of offer sheet right now with the situation that your team is in, considering that you know you don't really have cap space? So what for? What's to stop them from going and? offering money for somebody else or what what's your your outlook going to look like next season next season i'm worried about this season that's why i offer sheeted that kid for just one season that's it you know you know i i know there's some grumbling some people might be like hey you know i wish i can get paid more money like uh need you know, a rider who's been a good player for us or um uh other young players we got coming up in the system but you know something yeah, I, I threw this out there. There was an opportunity to go, well, let me put the screws to these guys. And that's what I decided to do, all right? 
Or should I have said I? Um, Don, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because, I mean, you're, you're kind of a pretty bad general manager, proved it in Atlanta. But, um, I mean, let me get something straight. You, you, your organization, your owner, Tom Dundon, it's too cheap to pay your Vesna finalist, Nedeljkovic, $3 million. But you can go out and give 6.1 to Jesperi Kakinemi when he's probably only worth about two and a half half or three million dollars right now i mean what kind of s word s backward decision making is that you kind of you kind of like a you kind of like a fred flintstone type character you just do really dumb things and there's no logic to that i, I don't i don't understand letting the delkovich go over three million dollars and bring in a guy Freddie anderson who's who is just really inconsistent and overrated and, and anti rant on you. Let Alex Nozelkovich go, who was a young guy. It was, I, I don't understand it. Help, help me understand it, Don, because it doesn't make sense to me and really anybody else. Look, I could see what you guys on your upstart YouTube channel are thinking that uh, an NHL GM doesn't really think that much. But what I could tell you is Alex Nozelkovich, you know, he shouldn't have asked for that extra half a million dollar a season. Come on. I mean, when I can go out and I can sign a kid who has uh, only been in the league for three years, if at that, and pay him an exorbitant amount of money. Um, all right, I'll be honest with you. I really just wanted to do this to screw around with the Canadians. Like, they, th there's, I mean, some, I, I asked the analytics people and they said, oh, we could kind of do something with this. So, kind of. I kind of, I gotta, I gotta play the tough guy. I can't stop not playing the tough guy. It's sort of like when you're bluffing at poker, you can't stop bluffing midway through the end and go, "All right, I fold." No, you got to keep going. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, we're, but we're gonna get, we're gonna get a, a, a fine young player because uh, I don't think uh, Bergevin is gonna be able to match. He's too busy. Uh, he's too busy disobeying the wishes of his draft picks um, and flexing at the gym. Yeah, and flexing at the gym, like really, uh, I mean, he did a hell of a job in his one year as an Islander. But uh, the um, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, man, this is just an opportunity for me to do a good troll job, and that's all I'm really focused on. Now, uh, as far as my, my goaltending situation, yeah, you know, Alex is a good kid, or as some idiot keeps calling him Scott for some reason. But it's just it's I wonder who that be. Yeah. No, I don't know. He's he's he, he's he's very bad with names anyway. But uh you know something? I, I took the chance. They're gonna have a good second line and uh and and that's what matters. So that we'll go with that. Well, thank you for your time, Don. Elliot Kovalchuk says you suck. Well, uh, can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> there goes Don Waddell. And again, uh, again, we're going just going through some of these. I actually have no idea. <laughs> the candy canes. <laughs> I like that. Well, Rod the Bot, I, I still like Rod, uh, Rod Brendan more. The candy canes is Larry Brooks saying that. Oh, okay. Um, see, sometimes I got to, you know, that lets me know I got to read Larry more. But on the other hand, I just. I can't deal with some of the stuff that Larry says sometimes. So anyway, guys, what do you think? Uh, yes, Barry Cavanagh, would you have taken the money if they offered it to you? Holy yeah. shit, could you butcher that name anymore? Yeah, I, I just said Cavanagh, well, didn't Kavanagh. I? <laughs> well, that was a good one. Yes, Barry Cockney Emmy. Oh, God, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh this is this is the worst name we need a bloopers me. outtake i know well i got I, I still keep saying i got that bloopers reel i need to, to to publish but anyway uh would you take the money the cockety emmy got if you like that video we got a lot more so check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like share and subscribe mm, your ideas are intriguing to me and i wish to subscribe to your newsletter